Hi there. It's such a privilege for me to share the richness of God's Word with you. This is day number 288, and today we read Ezekiel 8 and 9, Song of Solomon 5, and our second reading in Matthew 25. Most of the first and third readings in this podcast were recorded on the evening of October the 13th for the publication on the 15th in 2014. On the 13th during the day, I had visited a Bible school in the highlands of Papua, way away from town, where I was able to give New Testaments our plain Indonesian New Testaments, to about 35 Bible school students. These are older students who are preparing to be pastors, and most of them are from languages where they have no scripture in their own language. They are therefore forced to read God's Word in their second language. At the end of this podcast, I give one verse of a song that they sang before I began to present As you listen to it, please pray for the Bibleless language groups in the highlands of Papua, asking that God would supply Bible translators for them. And now our first reading for today. Terrible destruction is prophesied against Judah and Jerusalem. The trumpet will sound the battle call, but no one will get ready because they are under God's fury. Ezekiel 8. Then on September 17, during the sixth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, while the leaders of Judah were in my home, the Sovereign Lord took hold of me. I saw a figure that appeared to be a man, from what appeared to be his waist down. He looked like a burning flame. From the waist up, he looked like gleaming amber. He reached out what seemed to be a hand and took me by the hair. Then the Spirit lifted me up into the sky and transported me to Jerusalem in a vision from God. I was taken to the north gate of the inner courtyard of the temple, where there is a large idol that has made the Lord very jealous. Suddenly the glory of the God of Israel was there, just as I had seen it before in the valley. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, look toward the north. So I looked, and there to the north, beside the entrance to the gate near the altar, stood the idol that had made the Lord so jealous. Son of man, he said, do you see what they are doing? Do you see the detestable sins the people of Israel are committing to drive me from my temple? But come, you will see even more detestable sins than these." Then he brought me to the door of the temple courtyard, where I could see a hole in the wall. He said to me, Son of man, dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and found a hidden doorway. Go in, he said, and see the wicked and detestable sins they are committing in there. So I went in and saw the walls engraved with all kinds of crawling animals and detestable creatures. I also saw the various idols worshipped by the people of Israel. Seventy-five leaders of Israel were standing there with Jaazania, son of Shaphan, in the center. Each of them held an incense burner, from which a cloud of incense rose above their heads. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the leaders of Israel are doing with their idols in dark rooms? They are saying, The Lord doesn't see us. He has deserted our land. Then the Lord added, Come, and I will show you even more detestable sins than these. He brought me to the north gate of the Lord's temple, and some women were sitting there weeping for the god Tammuz. Have you seen this? he asked. But I will show you even more detestable sins than these. Then he brought me into the inner courtyard of the Lord's temple, at the entrance to the sanctuary. Between the entry room and the bronze altar, there were about twenty-five men with their backs to the sanctuary of the Lord. They were facing east, bowing low to the ground, worshipping the sun. Have you seen this, son of man? he asked. 
Is it nothing to the people of Judah that they commit these detestable sins, leading the whole nation into violence, thumbing their noses at me and provoking my anger? Therefore I will respond in my fury, I will neither pity nor spare them, and though they cry for mercy, I will not listen. Ezekiel 9 Then the Lord thundered, Bring on the men appointed to punish the city. Tell them to bring their weapons with them. Six men soon appeared from the upper gate that faces north, each carrying a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man dressed in linen who carried a rider's case at his side. They all went into the temple courtyard and stood beside the bronze altar. Then the glory of the God of Israel rose up from between the cherubim, where it had rested, and moved to the entrance of the temple. And the Lord called to the man dressed in linen who was carrying the rider's case. He said to him, Walk through the streets of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of all who weep and sigh because of the detestable sins being committed in their city. Then I heard the Lord say to the other men, Follow him through the city and kill everyone whose forehead is not marked. Show no mercy, have no pity. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women and little children. But do not touch anyone with the mark. Begin right here at the temple. So they began by killing the seventy leaders. Defile the temple, the Lord commanded. Fill its courtyards with corpses. Go. So they went and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing, I was all alone. I fell face down on the ground and cried out, O sovereign Lord, will your fury against Jerusalem wipe out everyone left in Israel? Then he said to me, The sins of the people of Israel and Judah are very, very great. The entire land is full of murder. The city is filled with injustice. They are saying, The Lord doesn't see it. The Lord has abandoned the land. So I will not spare them or have any pity on them. I will fully repay them for all they have done. Then the man in linen clothing who carried the writer's case reported back and said, I have done as you commanded. Yesterday in Song of Solomon chapter 4, we heard the young man extolling the perfection of his bride. Song of Solomon chapter 5 I have entered my garden, my treasure, my bride. I gather myrrh with my spices, and eat honeycomb with my honey. I drink wine with my milk. The young women of Jerusalem speak. O oh, lover and beloved, eat and drink, yes, drink deeply of your love. The young woman speaks. I slept, but my heart was awake when I heard my lover knocking and calling. Open to me, my treasure, my darling, my dove, my perfect one. My head is drenched with dew, my hair with dampness of the night. But I responded, I have taken off my robe. Should I get dressed again? I have washed my feet. Should I get them soiled? My lover tried to unlatch the door, and my heart thrilled within me. I jumped up to open the door for my love, and my hands dripped with perfume, my fingers dripped with lovely myrrh. As I pulled back the bolt, I opened to my lover, but he was gone. My heart sank. I searched for him, but I could not find him anywhere. I called to him, but there was no reply. The watchmen found me as they made the rounds. They beat and bruised me and stripped off my veil, those watchmen on the walls. Make this promise, O women of Jerusalem. If you find my lover, tell him I am weak with love. The young women of Jerusalem respond. Why is your lover better than all the others, O women of rare beauty? What makes your lover so special that we must promise this? The young woman responds. My lover is dark and dazzling. Better than ten thousand others. His head is finest gold. His wavy hair is black as a raven. His eyes sparkle like doves beside springs of water. They're set like jewels washed in milk. 
His cheeks are like gardens of spices giving off fragrance. His lips are like lilies perfumed with myrrh. His arms are rounded bars of gold set with beryl. His body, like bright ivory glowing with lapis lazuli. His legs are like marble pillars set in sockets of finest gold. His posture is stately, like the noble cedars of Lebanon. His mouth is sweetness. His mouth is sweetness itself. He is desirable in every way. Such a woman of Jerusalem is my lover, my friend. Yesterday in Matthew 25, we heard two parables that speak about being ready for Christ's return. Something that is repeated in a number of these parables about the return is that outside there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Through these parables, Jesus teaches an important idea, that the punishment in hell will be conscious punishment. There will be weeping and painful. There will be gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. Jesus is speaking. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted them to do business with his money while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Come, celebrate together with me. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Come, let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in a hole in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when I, as the Son of Man, come in my glory, and all the angels with me, then I will sit on my glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in my presence, and I will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. I will place the sheep at my right hand and the goats at my left. 
Then I, as the king, will say to those on my right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And I, as the king, will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then I, as the king, will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And I will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refuse to help the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Let's pray together. Our holy, heavenly Father, and Christ Jesus, we see today the righteousness of your judgments and the fact that you are holy, that you completely own and are the creator of everything, and you possess the right to give judgment. We praise you that your judgments are always right. We are awestruck by your power and your awesomeness. We praise you, Lord, for your sovereign control over all things. Like Ezekiel saw you in the temple, we fall down before you, our Lord. Please have mercy on us. And Father, please place us among those at your right and help us that we will feed the hungry, that we will give drinks to the thirsty, that we will welcome strangers into our homes, and that we will give clothing to people who need it and we will visit the people in prison. Help us to have mercy on others, Lord, because you have given us such great mercy. We pray these things that the glory of Christ would be seen here on this earth. Yeah.